Welcome to this training video on how to use Datalink Timer version 2. This is a completely new version of the application. And while it works somewhat similarly to the previous version, I want to go through and talk about the changes. First, you're going to download the application installed on your TriCaster system. And then we need to get the IP address from your TriCaster. And this can be found by clicking on the notification center icon found in the upper right corner of the screen. You're going to click on this button and at the bottom of the window, it will display your IP address. Now that we have that IP, we can go into a browser on another computer, type in that IP address and add the word slash timer to the end of the URL, and that will open the timer application. You'll see that there are two timers displayed, a countdown on the top and a count up below it. Both of these timers can be used either independently or simultaneously. So it's just use whichever ones you need. Each one has a large display of the current time, and this is also how it is currently visible inside the TriCaster system, along with controls for starting and stopping the stream, and then each one has its own set of controls below the numbers. So let's start with these controls. The first one is display, and this shows you the minimum number of digits that this timer will show. Now, if there are more digits in this, it's going to display those as well. But in this case, you can see, for example, that I have a 10 minute timer set, but I have a minimum of one minute and two seconds. So as soon as this goes down to nine minutes, the first digit will disappear. But I can change that by selecting this list. So I can either display a single second digit or the all the way up to displaying hours, minutes, and seconds with padding in those digits if necessary. So if I pick the hours, minutes, seconds, you can see a zero appears where the hours is because I'm telling the system I always want hours displayed. Next to that, we have our trigger. This is how we want to start and stop our timer. If it's in manual mode, you'll see that the start button is lit up and I can click on it and this will allow me to start and stop the timer as necessary. If I put it in either record or stream mode, you'll notice that the start button goes out. I can no longer click on it because it now follows the recording or streaming controls inside the TriCaster and it will either start or stop based upon the current status of the stream or record function. In the case of the countdown timer, I also have a starting time. This is what the reset button will work with. So if I always wanted my timer to restart at 15 minutes, let's say I can type that in. When I click reset, you'll see that it goes to 15 minutes. Now you can also type in any time you want. So you don't have to use this method. If I wanted to start at 12 minutes, I can start at 12. And when I hit start, that will start the countdown at 12. Same thing on the count up timer. If I wanted to start my count up maybe at, you know, seven minutes, I could punch that in. And now when I hit start, it would start counting up at seven minutes. The reset button on the count up timer will always reset you back to zero. Finally, there is the run macro at zero function, and this will list all of the macros currently on your TriCaster. And when the countdown timer reaches zero, it will run whatever macro you have selected in that list. Finally, you just need to get these timer data link keys inside your TriCaster. So let's take a look on how to do that. I'm gonna go back in my TriCaster. I happen to have a title already set up here. And when I click on my title, you'll see that there are two data link keys that are created a percent sign countdown percent sign for the countdown timer, and then percent count up percent for the count up timer. And once I have those entered in, I can display those on the screen. And you can see now I've got currently 12 minutes for my countdown and the count up is at zero. We can put these side by side and you'll see that now when I hit start and stop, those timers will start running and they'll keep going until either the top timer hits zero, at which point it will stop automatically. The count up timer will never stop. It will keep going until you stop it for some reason or the trigger stops it. And then of course you can press stop on here manually and then you have the ability to adjust the time if necessary or reset it back. The controls at the bottom can be adjusted at any time. So even when a timer is running, if you wanted to change the digits, I could go do that. 
uh, or I could change the trigger, but realize the trigger is going to follow whatever the current status is. So since streaming is not running right now, if I change the count up timer to stream, you'll see it immediately stops because the streaming function is currently stopped. So I hope you find Data Link Timer 2 useful, and I want to thank you for downloading and using this application.